Hey everybody, in this episode I'll give you some suggestions for running a short campaign. When Tucker ran Shadowrun for Dawn and I the very first time, we had no idea what we were getting into. It was just him, the GM, and two of us. That campaign lasted for a little over three years. It included a total of six different people, and four people um, were the main gaming group. And Don and I each ran three different characters. It was epic. It was so much fun. We still talk about it. We reference it. It was absolutely a blast. But three and a half years in order to tell a story is a really long time. Not all of us have that kind of commitment. Not all of us have that kind of time. People move, or they just get busy, or sometimes the story doesn't need to take that long. So I wanted to talk about running a shorter session. Having a campaign, a mini campaign, or a game that you know is only going to take, I would say, anywhere between four and eight sessions, but definitely less than ten. And when I talk about a session, I'm talking usually about three to four hour chunks of time with a break built in there somewhere. Um, it seems like a pretty standard time frame. Um, I know some people like to game for much, much longer than that, and some people need to game in shorter chunks. But for me, three to four hours is what makes it worth it for my time and everyone's time. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're talking about. Less than 10, probably somewhere right around six, three to four hour sessions. How do you set yourself up so that you can do that well, value your time, your player's time, and make sure that everybody's having a lot of fun? My first suggestion for running a short campaign is you as the DM, you need to know your story. What is the event? What is the main thing that this group of adventurers are working towards? Um, that doesn't mean that there can't be subplots and side quests and things like that, but those should all be probably a lot shorter and fewer in number so that you're always working towards the end goal. Uh, I would probably put it sort of in a three-act structure of why everybody is here and what is the first main thing that leads to this, you know, kind of crescendo then you're dealing with the fallout of what it is that's going on and working towards the end game, and now you're working towards the end game. And those three different things can all be two sessions each. There you go, six sessions, and you've told your entire story. The second thing that I think that you should do if you want to run a tight, short campaign is skip the session zero. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that that sounds a little strange. Dawn and I love Session Zero, and I think that there's a lot of really good reasons for it. But if you're on a time crunch, you've only got your six sessions, then I don't think that it's worth it to use an entire session, sometimes two, in order to introduce all of the characters and who are they and tease their backstory and then it's sort of the herding cats that you have to play as a GM of getting them all to decide why they're going to work together. I say skip all of that. Now, that doesn't mean that you just throw all of your players together. I think that it's really important that you're in communication with your players from the very beginning. And whether that's through text or messenger or getting people together, one or two or all of you at a time at a coffee shop or a bar, and talk about the characters that they're creating, that's still really important. But I don't think that you need that session zero of introducing everyone to each other. So that means as you talk to your players and you start to design that first session for everybody, they all need to know each other. They should all know each other and have a reason to be working together. Maybe they're all a part of the same guild. Maybe they're all a part of the same street gang or army. Maybe they're all in a fighting arena together. I don't know. That's going to be a part of the story that you put together. But 
skip all of the, well, this is my name and this is where I'm from and this is why I maybe want to work with this group, but maybe not, you have to convince me. It eats up a lot of time. And while it might be really rich for role play and backstory, it's not the place that I want to spend all of my time and efforts if I've only got six sessions with everybody around the table. My third suggestion is the one that's maybe a little bit more controversial and um, some of you might not agree with. In fact, I almost didn't include it in this video, but I do think it's important. And that is no newbies at the table. Okay, now I'm not trying to be a gatekeeper and I'm not trying to say that um, uh, don't invite new players to uh, run with you or you can only play with the people that you already know. When I say no new people at the table, what I'm talking about is, well, first of all, remember the point of what we're saying. You've got six sessions with these people and that's it. So if you're going to streamline those experiences, those six three to four hour chunks of time, you don't want to waste a lot of time with not understanding the rules or how the character works or even how the system itself functions. So it's not that you can only play with people that you already know. It's what I'm saying is, is that no one at the table, you included as the GM, should be brand new to the system that you're running. Look, if you have no idea how to play um, a, a D20 system, like, uh, let, let's say, Dragon Age, then on a time crunch, I don't think that it's a great idea that you're learning how to play the game as a player or as a GM uh, for the first time when you've only got so much limited time together. Or let's say that you've only ever played uh, one system and you really want to introduce your friend to it, um, maybe that's not the time, you know, this time crunch six campaign, uh, six session campaign. Um, there's other places for that. Now, if the whole point of running your mini campaign is that you and a bunch of friends all want to try a new, um, a new gaming system out together, well then obviously ignore this step. It has no place there. Um, but if, if let's say you're on um, holiday from school or you're just, you've only got a couple of months before you deploy again or whatever the reason is, um, if you're trying to tell a nice tight little story with this group of adventurers that already know each other, you're going to end up spending a lot of time wasted trying to figure out the rules if everyone at the table doesn't know them already. So unless you're all specifically getting together to learn a brand new system, the third tip is everyone at the table needs to have played in that system before. No newbies. And lastly, as a GM running a mini campaign, you need to be prepared. Have a list of shop names and use tables to generate your uh, treasure and your loot and your shop contents. And with those different types of things, get used to telling your players no. Now, telling your players no without killing the creativity or um, stomping on their fun. But sort of things like if your players are spending a whole lot of time because they feel like maybe there's uh, more information to be gained by interrogating a blacksmith that works for the keep. If that's not a part of the story that you've got and it's not something that you really have the time to create a bunch of side plot for, one way of doing that is simply asking for a wisdom check or an insight check or something along those lines and then pretty much whatever they roll, you can kind of gently nudge them to move on by saying something along the lines of, uh, you're pretty sure that this blacksmith doesn't have any more information and he's getting frustrated and it's going to be a waste of your time to keep this up. It's not stomping on their creativity and it's not flat out telling them no, but it's a way of guiding them back onto that main story as well as I was talking about being prepared with your notes and your lists and things like that. That way you're just not wasting 
two, four, five, ten minutes at a time of rolling things up and figuring out names and trying to remember what was going on. Remember, we've only got, you know, three or four hours and we've only got those six sessions. And so, quote unquote, wasting five minutes here and there just to try to figure out what the loot is, well, all of that can kind of add up. So tip number four, plan ahead and gently get used to telling people no. All right, folks, so there you go. Are you running a shorter campaign, something along the lines of six sessions? Well, those are my tips to make sure that you're staying on track and everybody's having a lot of fun. All right, folks, so have you run campaigns that are on the shorter side of things? Maybe the entire story is told in only four sessions or six or eight or something like that. What do you do ahead of time or while you're at the table to make sure that everybody's having a good time and the entire story gets told. I'd love to hear your tips and suggestions in the comments below. And what do you think of the four things that I laid out in order to make sure everything's running smoothly? A big thanks to all of our patrons, especially to Sean. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. So thanks for watching this video. Come back every week to see what it is that we're up to, as well as follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram, in order to um, see all of the videos that we're putting out and the other places where you can watch us. Don't forget to like and share and tag a friend if you think that this video would be helpful for them. But until next time, I'm Ryan, and this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. Kind of like how I should have known exactly what I was going to say in that, so it wasn't rambly. It would have been shorter and more to the point. <sighs> okay.